Hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of Aaron's Book Club. I just fed the cats, so I might have a bit of a commentary here for my uh, 23-year-old cat. Um, but I got another book here to read or to review with you, and I would like to do that now. Um, the book that I have is *The Island Stallion*, an exciting companion novel to *The Black Stallion*. And usually with these quick, like see, with these quick, um, I guess you call them grade books, I read through them so quickly that I don't, um, I'm not able to put my thoughts to paper about the reviews. But this one's a little bit different. This one kind of has, like it's written for the same audience as say the Thoroughbred series, but it's written in a more mature way. Like the people, the readers that were reading this were more of a mature mindset. Um, and I, I love that idea. I mean, this is a much older book than the Thoroughbred books. Um, I don't remember where the when the copyright was. Let me just double check here. Copyright renewed at 1976. Copyright The first copyright was 1948. So quite an old story, but written almost with a more intelligent audience reading. Um, so that, that was kind of fascinating. Um, also, before I go any further, this will probably be a um, spoiler review. So if you haven't read The Island Stallion, uh, make sure you read that and then come back, because I don't want to uh, ruin the story for you guys. So anyway, I do have a few notes here. Um, <clears throat> as I was saying, it, it's, it's a much more mature writing compared to, say, the Th Thoroughbred series, but like kind of the same audience that it's um, geared to, which I found fascinating, because it really points out to the fact that um, us as a human race have almost been kind of dumbed down. Um, you're not expected to to pay for your own decisions anymore it's nobody's fault for anything anymore and the writing reflects that here um it's a softer writing now it's a gentler writing now even when disaster happens it's it's written differently now um whereas here it's it's different the choices that are made are are real and they're harsh and they're more realistic and they're more I don't know, you can relate to them better, so it's an easier story to understand and to read. Um, also, I wanted to bring out here that the main character is accepting and acknowledging of his fear. There is a few times where something happens where he is fearful, like they walk into a, a room of skeletons and it terrifies them so much that they take off. And instead of writing that the, the main character felt shame for running, um, uh, from that kind of scene the main character instead said yeah I did run because you know what that was scary and I have a right to feel fearful about that and it was a confidence there without being um, what's the word without being like big-headed without being arrogant it was a comfortableness in your own skin that you never really see in um, main characters anymore. Usually the main characters are somebody who hates themselves and they kind of get over that in the story. But this this character knows who he is, knows what he feels, and accepts what he feels. He, he doesn't think that he needs, like, that he's perfect the way he is. He understands that probably he should change, but change in, is, is something that can happen. Um, just a really well-written character. Um, the fact that he's confident in his emotions was something I enjoyed. Um, the one down and distracting thing was they constantly called each other by their own, like, by their first names. So whenever they were talking, they mentioned their first names. And I don't know if that was a thing at the time. Like, if I was talking to my friend, I would say whatever I wanted to say and then mention that person's first name. And that person would write or talk back and mention that person's, like, my name. Um, so that was really distracting. Um... But, I mean, it, it didn't detract from the story, it just distracted from the story. I also want to say that the ending of the book, and again, this is not a spoiler-free review. You will be spoiled if you continue to listen to me right now. But the end of the book, when he doesn't take the stallion and he, he accepts the reality of what a struggle it would be to take the stallion off the island, and the reality of destroying the quality of the breed of that stallion and and understanding that he needed to be with his herd to increase the quality of his herd um really well done really realistic really understandable 
really sucked because I wanted him to take the stallion back and have a life with, with the stallion at home. But again, that wouldn't be realistic. And Walter Fairley is very good at being realistic and entertaining. This guy is a master story crafter. And I really think that any um, young adults and even, even um, you know, folks like, like my age would really enjoy reading this book. I thoroughly enjoyed reading this book. There, see, now I'm going to wake up a bit. I needed my coffee. But anyway, um, I'm reading the next installment in this book, After the Iron Stallion, which is, well, no, the, the next one after that was The Black Stallion and Satan. I've read that already. So the next one after that is The Black Stallion's Blood Bay Colt, and I'm just starting that book, and I will let you know when I have that book read. So thanks very much, guys, for listening to me talk about another book I have read. And any of you guys out there, give this one a shot. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.